Saints of God, we want to welcome you again into this new year on the first Sunday of 2022 by the grace of the Almighty God. You and I have made it and we thank God for it. And we know that it is all the grace of God that we went through 2020 and 2021 because of this COVID thing that is ravaging the world, affecting the world, and all sorts of things happening. We lost a lot of people, great leaders in the spiritual side, in the business side, in the political side, and in every other sphere. But I want to talk this morning, ladies and gentlemen, because I've been wondering why do we have strong Christians and then we've got weak Christians? We've got overcoming Christians. We've got overcome the Christians. We've got Christians who, can, who are able to stand in the storm and those who can hardly stand a very small little minor issue. And they just fall apart. Why is that? Jesus said upon this rock, I'll build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Meaning Jesus said, I'll start something called church. And this thing will be so powerful that its members, men, women, boys, and girls, will be able to stand against the gates. Uh, the gates means the kingdom of the devil. That all of us, not only pastors, not only those in position of leadership, but everybody who is born again is, is supposed to stand strong and be able to conquer and defeat the devil. But why is that not happening? Because Jesus cannot lie. He said it will happen. So when I looked around, I saw some things I'm going to share with you. I believe that you saw yourself in 2020 and 2021 and going back where you were just a, a, an up and down kind of a Christian. Down meaning in sin, up meaning in living right, etc. You find that we, we, we are that type of that, that falls and then rises and falls and rises. Why not stand, just stand and keep on standing? Now some people will say, of course it's the devil and demon spirits and so on. No, 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 no. Jesus said those things will be there, will be there, will be there, but we will conquer them. Why are we being conquered? I want to share six very important things which I, I believe if you listen, you will be blessed. And 2022 will see a new you. Not the old up and down type of a Christian, but a strong mama, strong daddy, strong pastor, strong ordinary church member, strong youth who can stand in any situation of life and still conquer. Let's go to the Bible. The first thing, ladies and gentlemen, is John 1.12. The Bible says in John 1.12, But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Ladies and gentlemen, the first thing is salvation. When you receive Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, and Jesus steps into your life, and makes you a new creature and destroy your old bad evil habits and give you the power to become a son of God. You cannot be ordinary. Now the thing is we play with salvation. We don't take our salvation seriously. That's why we can even put our salvation aside and kiss the devil. That's why we can put our salvation aside and do something wrong. We know it is wrong. We're not supposed to do. And we go ahead and do it anyway. Because to us, we, we play with salvation. In other words, salvation is not a serious issue with even we that are born again or that claim to be born again and sons of God. And the moment you stand with you play, you have the guts to play with something as serious as salvation. Man, then it means you can play with anything. So I've realized that most of the time, we don't take our salvation seriously. That's why when the devil comes with temptation, you don't tell the devil, listen, I don't do that. I'm born again. I'm a child of God. I don't do that. We fall in into the temptation, and then we tell the world, no, the devil tempted me. Who said when we are tempted, we must fall into the temptation? Why did Jesus not fall into the temptation? The Bible says he was tempted with all temptation that tempts man. But Jesus never sinned. Why do we sin and complain and say it was the devil? Because we are playing with salvation. So the moment I warn you, say, I warn you, mama. I warn you, young person. I warn you, pastor. The moment you play with salvation, you don't play salvation. You take your salvation for granted. It means you can do anything. It means you can do anything, the devil says. 
As long as you can trample upon your salvation and act like a, like a child of the devil who doesn't know the truth. Jesus said you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. Free from what? From the influence of Satan and sin. We are supposed to be free from that. The testimony that the devil tempted me was not supposed to come through our mouth. There are those of us we keep on saying, oh, it was the devil. You know, you know that it was the devil. You know the devil? The devil. You see the devil? And we keep on praising the devil. We are playing with salvation. So if you want to be strong, stop playing with salvation. Take your salvation seriously. Believe you are a son of the living God. There are things you cannot do. There are things you cannot say. There are things you cannot be involved in. There are places you cannot go because you are a son of God. If you do that, 2022 will see a new you. Number two. In Matthew chapter 4, when we are talking about the devil tempted me, no, it was the devil. Listen to what Jesus says in chapter 4 of, of Matthew verse 4. Jesus was being tempted, but this is the answer he said. He said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Listen to this. The number two thing that can help you stand strong, mama, the number two thing that can make you strong, stand strong, sir, is the word of God. Jesus said we live by the word. By the word of God we can live. What is to live? It means we can survive the attacks, the challenges, the, 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 the temptations, and every hard and terrible thing that may come our way, we can still live through. But you need the word. You need the word in your spirit, man. When you're born again in your spirit, your spirit doesn't eat food. Your spirit doesn't eat your bread and your rice and your meat and other things. It eats the word. The word is the bread of the spirit. So some of us, we are born again, yes, but our spirits don't eat. You wait for Sunday. Imagine eating one meal per week. Even physically, you can make it. So some of us, our spirits are so emaciated. They are so skinny because we don't eat the word. Our, our spirits are not nourished by the word. The vitamins of the word are not there in our spirit man. So our spirit man becomes weak and weak and weak and then fall and faint. And after that, it dies. And then we keep on going to church with a dead spirit. That's why when the pastor is preaching, you are never touched by nothing. You are never affected. You are never impacted. You never change. Because you, you can't feed a dead corpse. You can't give a corpse food, man. It will never eat. So some of our spirits are dead. Because we haven't been eating. We have not been eating. We wait for the pastor on Sunday. And when he's preaching, sometimes because we are very, very hungry, we are not even listening. And we don't take the word in. So without the word, you cannot live, my friend. Jesus said, man liveth by the word. So when I eat, man here is referring to the spirit. So when I read the word, when I create time to read the word, read the word in the evening, read the word in the morning, read the word during the day when I've got time. When I read the word and take the word out of the Bible pages into my spirit, man, my spirit liveth. And if you can do that, 2022 will see a new you. Number three, Romans chapter 10. In Romans chapter 10, ladies and gentlemen, we hear Paul teaching the church of Rome in verse 17. He says something very powerful. He said, so then faith cometh, faith cometh, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Ladies and gentlemen, here comes number three, a very important thing. The Bible says faith cometh, faith cometh. Faith cometh from the word. 
from the word cometh faith, and when faith cometh, we live. Paul says we live by faith and not by sight. Which means when I, I am a word-based Christian, I live by the word. It means the word I have will produce faith in my heart. And when I've got faith, I shall not die, but I shall live. Oh yeah, Satan will attack. Satan will bring all kinds of things. He will bring storms. He will bring droughts. He will bring famines. He will bring all kinds of things. But when I've got faith in God, brought by the word of the living God, that I read and live by and obey, my faith will take me through all kinds of things. Faith cometh. Faith cometh from the word. And when I'm a faith man, I'm a word man, then it means I can stand in the storm. Because when the devil creates images, he creates pictures and tell me that I'm going to die. I'm going to end here. Nothing will, I, I will never come out of this. I'll never conquer this. But when I've got the word, and the word is the truth, and the word is true, when Satan says something, the word will well up in my spirit and say, but it is written. But it is written. And when I speak the word, when I pronounce the word to myself, it gives me life. It gives me victory. It makes me to conquer the word of the living God. So when you don't have the word, probability is you have faith. When you have no faith, watch this. We are going to number four. Number four is prayer. First Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 17 says, pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. So God advises us with the sons, with the children, we, his people. He says, pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. In other words, pray in the morning. Pray during the day. Pray in the evening. Pray in the night. Ladies and gentlemen, prayer. I've heard many people say prayer is a shield. That's not true. Prayer is not a shield. Faith is a shield. But prayer is a means. Prayer is a means of carrying my needs, my requests, my 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 such my 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 thoughts, my fears, my whatever to God. Prayer is a transport that takes me into the presence of God. But listen to this. The Bible said the prayer of faith of a righteous man availeth much. The prayer of faith of a righteous man availeth much. So I've seen Christians who pray a lot when they are in trouble. But they don't realize that it's not only bubbling words. It's not only reciting words. Almighty God. Oh powerful God. Oh everlasting Father. Hey God of love and all that. Those things are true my friend. But they carry no weight. When you say them. Without faith in God. It cannot just be prayed. It must be a prayer of faith. It must be a prayer of faith. And a prayer of faith, it's not for every Christian who goes to church. It is for those who are word-based. It is for those who live by the word. Those type of people don't play with salvation. When they pray, God the Father say, yeah. Prayer, sir, when do we pray? God said, pray without ceasing. In other words, pray when things are right and pray when things are wrong. Pray when things are hot and pray when things are cold. Pray when things are difficult. Pray when things are exciting. Pray when you've got all things. Pray when you've got nothing. Pray when you are loved and pray when you are hated. Pray when things are attacking you. Pray when you are under divine protection. Pray, 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 but pray by faith. And by faith means by living by the word. 
You read the word, you believe what the word says, and you act the word. And when you do that, I bet you, even the devil himself cannot take you down. Even the devil himself cannot win. No matter what type of temptation he brings, you will step on top of it and say, I'm a child of God. I'm a son of the living God. I don't get into things like this. I don't get things like that. My father is the provider. He supplies all my needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. I don't have to do that in order to get that because my father is a provider. Why? Because you are a man of faith. You are a woman of faith. You can stand and wait. You can stand and wait. And 2022 will see a new you if you live by prayer and living by faith. Number five, Psalm 37. Let's go to it. Psalm 37, ladies and gentlemen. A very exciting scripture. Psalm 37. Let's read verse 23. The Bible says, Some, 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 some. Come on now. Psalm 37. I want to read it to you. I know it by heart, but I want to read it to you. Listen to this. It says, The steps of a good man, good woman, good young person, good preacher are ordered by the Lord and he delights in his way. The steps of a good man. Now, why did we get into all kinds of situations last year in 2021 and 2022 and going back? Why? Where was God? Why did we get into issues? Why did we get into things that we regretted? Some of, or some of the regrets will stay for life. We the regret for life. And we're children of God. And we're not blind. But why did we get ourselves into situations? Why did we lose so much that God blessed us with? And we lost it. Why? Because we were never ordered by the Lord to be involved in certain things. To, be, to participate in certain things. We just thought, no, we can do it. You know why? Because some of us are too educated. Yeah, we are university staff. We are university uh, products. Yeah, we studied the isms and the iction and the e and the isms and, and and all those things and they, they make us sharp and they make us look like we are we are modern and we know. And therefore, God is put aside until we get into trouble. And when we're in trouble, we expect when we pray, God must run. When we don't obey God, when we don't live by faith, when we don't live by the word, when we get into trouble, God must run. My question, my friend, are you sure God can and should run for you and to you? Do you deserve that? You that play with salvation. You that does not even study the word. You know you must study the word, but you don't. You know you must live by faith, but you live by fear. You don't believe God for that. You know you, know you should pray, but you don't. But when you're in trouble, God must run. Why? Friends, listen to this. In order to avoid all kinds of nonsense we found ourselves in in 2021 and so on, let's be guided by the Lord. The Bible are the steps of a good man. Good man. Good man, meaning a righteous person. How do I become a righteous pastor? You accept Jesus Christ, the righteous servant of the living God, and he gives you the power to become a son of God, and he transfers his righteousness to you. And you become righteous. So the Bible says when you are now born again, you are righteous, be ordered, be commanded, be led by the Spirit of God. Jesus said, I will never leave you as orphans. I'll send you the Holy Spirit. And one of the things he will do is to guide you. The troubles we got ourselves in last year. We got there without being guided by the Spirit. Because the Spirit will never get you into nonsense. The, devil, the Spirit will never get you into wrong things. It is our own heads and the devil. 
who sometimes we cooperate with, who leads us astray and we agree, because sometimes we don't even know the word. We have nothing that will say, hey, 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 you don't do that. Because we don't have the word. So the steps of a good man. If we want, you and I want to be strong Christian 2021, let's wait. When we want to do something, let's pray and wait and hear what the Holy Ghost say. When he says, go, then we go. When he says, stop, we don't say why, we stop. We don't keep on going and say, oh, why must I stop? And we keep on walking. That's not being ordered by the Lord. Ordered by the Lord means he gives you orders. And orders are not suggestions. If you are disciplined, when you are given an order, you say, yes, sir. If they say walk, you walk. Turn right, turn right. Take three steps, one, two, three. Turn left, you turn left. That's you are taking orders. Now, some of us Christians, we, 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 we order ourselves. And we want God to follow us into our things. We can't be strong Christians like that. So number five, whatever, whatever you do, allow the Holy Ghost to lead you. If you pray and the Holy Spirit says nothing, do nothing. And wait for the order. The last thing, which is number six. Hebrews 10.25. The last scripture today. I hope you are learning something. I hope you are, you, you, you are benefiting. I hope you are being built. I hope you are getting stronger and stronger because God wants you to be stronger and he wants me to be strong. Okay. Uh, Matthew, uh, uh, Hebrews 10.25 says, Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exhorting the, uh, one another, and so much so uh, the more as you see the day approaching. Which day? The coming back of the Lord Jesus. The second coming of Jesus is very close. Now let me close with this. The Bible says, don't stop assembling yourself with other Christians. In other words, don't stop fellowshipping with other Christians. Don't stop fellowshipping. Don't go to church because you want to. Don't go to a prayer meeting because you want to. Don't attend a conference because you want to. Attend a conference because there's an order from the word of God. Don't stop assembling yourselves. God knows the power of fellowship. God knows the power of fellow Christians upon your life. He knows the, the positive influence of other Christians in your life. Not this thing of ours. It is Sunday and I decide not to go to church. Simply because I feel tired. I overworked yesterday, Saturday. Then today I don't go to church because I feel tired. I've got a headache. Uh, and my back is aching. That's exactly the very time to go to church. That's the time to go to church. When I'm not feeling well, it is time to go to church. But we make excuses. And then we do our, our we wash our clothes and, and we do washing and spring cleaning on Sunday. We do our ironing and we wash our cars and we clean our yard. And because during the week I'm busy. Also, so Sunday you are not busy. The very day of the Lord. You use it for your own thing. And you want to be a strong Christian. Fellowship. It's important. To go to church. To hear the word. To praise and worship God. With other Christians. And we, we, we were impacted by the word. And we're strengthened by the word. It's fellowship. So these six things, ladies and gentlemen. They can make you a new you. In 2022. If you take all these six things, number one, don't play with your salvation. Number two, be a student of the word. Study the word for yourself. Not to, go and, to get a word to go and preach. No, 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 no. A word to eat into your spirit, man. To live by faith. Because by faith you conquer and you live and you succeed. And you overcome. Prayer. Must be like your breath. You don't stop breathing and say, I'm busy. I didn't, you cannot say, I didn't have time uh, to breathe, you know. So I haven't been breathing since this morning. You can't do that. So prayer is also very important. And then to be led by the Holy Spirit. 
and then fellowship. All these things, working together, the six of them. There are others, but I just have time for these six. If you take them and you leave them, call me in three months down the line and tell me that these six things are not working for you. They are not changing you. They are not making you better. Because I know they work. These are the very things that make some Christian to stand no matter what. They stand. Not because they are lucky, but because they, they apply these things. They don't play with salvation. They study the word. They eat the word. They drink the word. They breathe the word. They live by faith. They are prayerful. And they are led by the Spirit. So the Spirit will never lead them astray, but into all righteousness. Child of God, this is the word that I have for this first Sunday of 2022. And I'm closing. If you've never accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, do it now. You never know if 2022 is not your year of departure out of this world. And the Bible says, they that receive Jesus are given the power to become sons of God. And when they die, they go to heaven. And I know that's what you want. So if you have not accepted Christ as Lord and Savior yet, I want to pray with you right now. Say, dear Lord Jesus, I heard your word. I receive you into my heart as my Lord and my Savior. Forgive me all my sins and give me the power to become a son of God. I believe in my heart that Jesus the Savior has saved my soul right now. I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus. Amen and amen. You are born again if you pray that prayer and God will help you as you do these six things. Let me pray a general prayer for everybody else. Ladies and gentlemen, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we have heard about these six things, very important things that can help us go through 2022 without regrets, with victory after victory, living for God, putting a smile on the face of our daddy. God, when you see us overcoming, all kinds of temptations and issues and attacks and all that. And we conquer because these are things that can help us conquer in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Daddy. We have released the word to the world. Bless it in the hearts of your people. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you, friends. The Lord willing, I'll see you coming Sunday. Bye.